Hello everyone, Kanasa here and welcome back to Coming Home Redux. In this episode, we are going to be spending the vast majority of it around Fury because the EVE class vessel, the RSAS Venus, well, yeah, it's, it's going to make its way to Fury. <laughs> and that's basically it. We are also going to be sending the Aphrodite over to Vasto at a later point as well. But we're going into planetary. And obviously, we did send this off in the last episode. And what I am doing right now is performing a bit of a deep space maneuver in order to fine tune our approach. Obviously, I want to be as close to Fury as I possibly can when I arrive. And then that way I can make most of the planet's gravity, you know, to, to capture us into a nice low orbit. But with that, we fire up the pulsed fission engine, the Vern, on the Venus as we arrive. And one thing about this was I did actually start this a little bit late. Because I was a bit foolish and I was trying to get some cinematic shots of this as it flew past Fury. That was a bit silly of me, which meant our burn wasn't the best. However, because it was a ridiculous long burn anyway, it didn't really matter, to be honest. Anyway, we are now at Fury, and that means we have more science to collect. So what I am doing here is I am sending some science off back to Road, and we are also putting science into the laboratory that we do have on board this rather chunky vessel. I do actually have two labs. There is one in the Manta and there is one actually on the main interplanetary vessel itself. That way I can get all of the science and on our vo voyage, even journey, journey and voyage mixed together, over to Fury we gained quite a bit just by really kind of exploiting, I guess? the science lab that we do have on there. However, in future iterations of interplanetary craft, I'm not going to be able to do that because I've basically got all of the lab science from around road now. So when I leave road, yeah, I can't throw any more science into the lab. So this is the last time that we're going to be doing that, which is a shame, but it did get me about, I think, 2,600 science on the journey over to Fury. So that was pretty nice. Anyway, what we are doing right now is releasing the first of those all-in-one scanners that I did slap onto the side of, of the interplanetary vessel. Yes. And I was a little bit of a donut when designing these. I packed them with about 1,200 meters per second of delta V because I thought, well, that's going to be more than enough to do all of our maneuvers that we are going to want to do around Fury to send one in a nice low polar orbit of Fury and the other over to Anger, which is Fury's moon. However, I was incredibly wrong. So unfortunately, we are going to put this in quite elliptical orbit, into quite an elliptical orbit. And because of that, that means that our scans are going to be a bit rubbish. But anyway, with that being done, we are going to wait for those scans to happen and we are going to bring the Venus's orbit around Fury down a little bit. So it's in a nice low orbit and then that way I can figure out the best way of getting back to road when we want to. And we can also send this vessel over to Fury. No, Anger, the moon of Fury. I, I forgot what it was called then. Yeah, no, we'll be able to send this over to Anger. This was not originally the plan, but however, because I wanted to get a nice scan sat map of Anger, I thought we'd send the entire thing over. But we will see that at a future point in this video, because that's all we're going to do around Fury for now. Because whilst we were doing all of these maneuvers, well, our Vasto window popped up. Right now, I'm actually just going to see how much Delta V it's going to cost to get back to road from Fury. And it's, it's a decent amount. It's 88 days. And we, as we can see here, we have more than enough life support for our duration around Fury. I was a bit worried about this because obviously, as I did mention in the last episode, we do not have the ability to freeze our Kerbals on there. Anyway, we are going to come to R&D to unlock a few things, mainly new solar panels, some new aerodynamic stuff. Yes, the best aerodynamic stuff that we can get. And yeah, something else. I forgot what it was, though. But we're going to take Kerman Kerman, Baldy Kerman, Spaceman Kerman, Alpaca Kerman, Kerman Jebediah, and me, Karnasa Kerman. I was on the Kerbal application. Someone put my name forward, so I finally got to me. And what we're going to be doing is sending these up to the Aphrodite. And this time, fortunately, the docking port, not the pocking dort, as I said twice in the last episode, 
was able to survive getting up to orbit. And then that way we could dock the Manta to the Aphrodite and we could transfer all of those Kerbals across as well as the Glycerol. Yes, that we need in order to, to freeze our Kerbals. Yes, that's, that's what we use Glycerol for. Well, we got the Manta back down safely. And with that, it was time to start the 30 minutes long burn all the way over to Vasto. Vasto is the furthest planet away from the Tempest System Center, so it does take an awful lot of Delta V to get there. However, it's not quite as bad as Fury because as it's so far away, the capture burn isn't really going to take an awful lot, which is nice. It was also very inclined compared to Rhodes, so we have to leave at a certain time, and I could do some sort of mid-course correction to fix our inclination, but Mechjeb's advanced transfer window planner actually just sends you so you intersect it when you are at the ascending or descending node which is really nice but as we can see with a little bit of a play around of a play around a play around of a deep space maneuver we are more than capable of getting ourselves over to vasto with the aphrodite but it is going to take a couple of years to arrive because it is very very far away so with that being done, what we're going to do is we're going to wait until we're in deep space because that way I can level up my astronauts. And now we're going to freeze four of those Kerbals. We'll keep two just to make sure that all of the systems on board the spacecraft are running. We've got scientists to perform experiments. If I want to, I don't think we do have any science that we are going to gain, though. Like I said, that laboratory module is going to be useless at the moment because we have harvested everything that we can from low road orbit and from high road orbit as well. Anyway, with that all being done, I blather on about that a little bit, we are going to come back to the Venus, which is of course the RSAS Venus, the big EVE class ship that is currently in orbit around Fury, what we saw at the beginning of this video. And we are going to make our way over to Anger. Yeah, I didn't want to send the entire spacecraft over, I did just want to send the scanner, and I did want to send the Manta strapped onto the side, but as I did mention, the scanner does not have enough Delta V to get over to Anger and then get back. I was a little bit worried that we were going to expend too much Delta V of that pulsed fission engine of the entire craft, that we might have a little bit of an issue getting back home, but I thought, you know what, screw it, I'd rather have pretty maps than keeping my Kerbal safe. Yes, that seems to be a, a theme of this series. Although that being said, I've not actually killed any Kerbals in this series yet. No, I killed one at the very beginning, and for some reason they respawned, which was a bit of a shame. Yes, I was messing around with some janky early tech space planes that did not go very well. But apart from that, no, we've not killed anyone. So this has been much better than the last Coming Home series where I killed like six Kerbals in one flight. So yes, things are looking good. Anyway, we did detach the all-in-one scanner around Anger and because it was already in orbit of Anger, Anger being very, very small, we didn't need much Delta V at all to put ourselves into a polar inclination and start scanning the hell out of this rather small moon. It's really not that large. It's slightly larger than Armstrong, and it has some very interesting surface features, but it is, it's quite easy to do some maneuvers around there. And the sphere of influence of it is tiny as well. And that is another problem that I had with the ScanSat is obviously you need to have that at a certain altitude for everything to work properly. So there was only a couple of scanners on that ScanSat that actually worked. So all in the scanners for this episode, the scanners for going over to Fury, well, it's a bit of a waste of time putting them on there if I'm gonna be particularly honest, because neither of them have been that successful. Although that being said, the one around Fury, I think because we do have it passing over quite a low orbit at points, it will be able to scan everything around Fury given quite a considerable amount of time. Anyway, whilst I was talking about that, what I did was land the Manta on the surface of Anger. And we've got 6,162 meters per second of Delta V on this thing after having landed on the surface. And it really doesn't take an awful lot to move this around. So my plan for now is to do a lot of biome hopping. We've brought three Kerbals down to begin with out of a total of six on this mission. And what I would like to do is get all six of those on the surface of Anger. And I feel that way, it hopefully should level those Kerbals up a little bit more than say if I just left them on the Eve class vessel. I keep forgetting the name of it, the Venus. Anyway. 
we got out, we got Tuck Kerman out, I believe. He planted a flag. And with that, with the science gained from the lowlands, we are going to start biome hopping. And I did notice there were some fascinating surface features that I definitely wanted to go and check out. Like this ginormous crystal in front of us. Yes, yeah, so we get another Kerbal out. I can't remember which one this was. But we want to go and investigate because this does look rather fascinating. Ah, it's Vans Kerman. And yes, crystal analysis. So we can actually get science from this, which is very nice. And the crystals! What could they mean? What could they mean? I think the fluff text for the science experiment was because of Anger's proximity to the Rings of Fury, a lot of material does get gathered on the surface and it allows those crystals to form. At least that's what I remember. Anyway, with the Midlands... No, what was that? That was the valleys? I can't even remember what biome that was. We've gone to the lowlands, we went to the one with the crystals, and now we are at the Midlands and we find a stone cluster. Yes, and this is another thing that says, because of the dust of the rings, that's, that's, that's why this has formed here. Anyway, I did plant a flag yet again to note where we have been, and it was a big spiky rock. And let's try not to land on one of those, because I feel like that would end rather badly. And I would like to keep my mantas intact. Well, <laughs> I, I say that, but something may happen very shortly that is a little bit of a disaster, but we'll see that. So what we did there was we flew back up to the Venus and transferred the crew across. So the original three have gone back on the interplanetary vessel. Now we've got three new Kerbals, Phineas Kerman, Ballas Kerman, and Longboy Kerman. And this was bad. So I slowed my horizontal velocity and <laughs> yes, we de-winged the Manta. We clipped the wings of the Manta. We came down at about, I think it was 30, 40 meters per second. Because I was busy faffing around, changing the rear engines to the VTOL engines, I really should assign those to an action group. And then that way, none of this would be a problem. I would have been able to do it a lot faster. Fortunately though, all of the rear engines survived and we still do have a lot of fuel on this thing. A problem with this though, is that the Manta had all of its monopropellant on board the wings. That's where I stored that fuel. So that's gonna make docking with the Venus a bit of a nightmare. I did actually go and get the Venus and I used the Venus to dock. But anyway, we did a structure analysis and it says that a crystal might have once sat on top of this structure. That, to me, sounds like that is an artificial construct. And it does beg the question yet again, who has been here before? Obviously, maybe some Kerbals previously, when they were escaping from Kerbin, but who knows? This definitely does mean that we may want to further investigate anger at a later date. But here I am using the big craft to dock. And with that, that will be the end of this video. I hope you have enjoyed it. I have been Karnasa, and I will see you later.